Yeah, I think we are live. Yes. Yeah. Very good okay. afternoon, everyone. Ready good to afternoon. go? Yep. Uh, so all those who are joining us online, firstly, a very warm welcome. Uh, I know it's uh, 2 o'clock, and we are hoping to keep this session very interactive. Uh, so from Bazaar Voice, we have with us uh, Srini, who is heading their uh, India team, and uh, Kunal, who is uh, you know looking after all recruiting initiatives at Bazaar Voice. So thank you, uh, Kunal, and thank you, Srini, for joining us today. Uh, and what we want to you know uh, uh, achieve through this session is to uh, tell our uh, uh, you know job seekers who are on live, online currently uh, what it would be like working at Bazaar Voice, right? Uh, so to start off with. Uh, you know, just to as we go ahead, uh, we'll try to you know uh, keep things a bit time bound because we have limited time on our hands. Uh, we'll also be having breakout sessions after the uh, you know session is over, so wherein you can interact more with the uh, candidates. They'll have a lot of questions to ask you, so we can pick it up there. Uh, to begin with, I'd like to you know uh, I'd like you to tell us a little bit uh, about Bazaar Boys, your global presence, uh, your customers, you know. Uh, any funding related info to all our job seekers out there uh, and especially focusing on uh, you know uh, your uh, india setup and you know what is your vision for the india team uh, and you know uh, things like that all right very good um, okay uh, my name is srini basava i'm the india center head for bazaar voice as well as the vp of engineering so i had both functions here hopefully you can see my screen and can hear me okay if not please raise your hand and we will um, you know, address that. What I will use is a few props, a few slides that I will walk through, uh, maybe about 10 minutes, maybe a couple of minutes more. Um, and then I will probably uh, pause for questions, et cetera. Uh, thanks once again for taking the time to talk to us today, listen to us, give us the time here. Uh, all right, uh, Bazaar Wise, uh, you know, very quickly, I want to jump into our mission and vision first, just to kind of say, tee off the story. Uh, we are primarily here to make uh, shopping smarter, um, and we are here to connect, um, you know, uh, internet retailers, brands, and their consumers. Uh, that's our mission, and our vision is to make shopping radically transparent. That's what we talk about. So I want you to kind of hear about everything I talk over the next five to ten minutes. Uh, with that lens in mind it's all about um uh, e-commerce e retailers um the retailers when i say retailers i'm talking about walmart's targets kind of world-class brands uh, brands are all the products that are sold so on those retailers for example apple google samsung you know l'oreal you can go on and on and consumers are people like you and me who are actually out there shopping experimenting and so you know uh, analyzing etc um, and now, uh, very quickly to the uh, kind of like a money slide here. Uh, so what have we become today? Uh, so we are not a startup. I uh, just want to be very clear, get that out of the way. Uh, we are new to India, but we are not a startup. Uh, we have been around for about 15, 16 years. Um, we have become a global leader in this space. Uh, we are um, you know, based out of Texas, Austin uh, primarily, and we are about 1,000 people globally. Uh, 950 was the number um, you know, a few months ago. We continue to grow. We are in 12 countries. Our product development is in three countries, North America, um, Europe. In Europe, we are in Belfast, uh, Ireland. And of course, we started our India Center about a year ago. Um, so more on the second vertical, yeah. we cater to about 62,000 retailers and brands, about 1,900 odd retailers and 4,000 plus brands that actually um, you know, are part of our network. About a billion uh, plus customers, 1.3 billion customers read our ratings and reviews every month. So we're talking about a billion customers. We are influencing their purchasing power on a monthly basis globally. And we, are, we have tons and tons of reviews on our platform, what we refer to as user-generated content. And where we start differentiating from platforms like Amazon, et cetera, where they have their own reviews, et cetera, is the authenticity. Yeah, I think there's a lot of problem happening, Karan. Even I'm also getting logged out again and again. I'll just give me a second. I'm checking with my team. Yeah, he's back again. All right. I got kicked out. Sorry about that. 
All right, so I can keep start, uh, talking, and um, and we we actually ensure everybody can hear me okay. I'm assuming. Okay. All right. Uh, we actually uh, ensure that our content is authentic, as well as um, and then the right hand side. I want to talk about. We currently ninety three percent of consumers read product reviews before they do any purchasing, and you know that, and we are able to influence a good 60 plus percent of those people. So that is the kind of an impact Bazaar Voice currently has on global uh, e-commerce purchasing that's happening out there. As I talked about, billion plus customers, 4,000 plus brands, 9,100 plus retailers globally. All right, um, then I will quickly run through um, what, what are the types of things. Uh, this is a very, very quick thing to talk about. Ratings and reviews in 2000s were very primitive. They are starting to get very sophisticated, where they are more in the moment, uh, the same shoes, but it is more about personal, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, personal um, experiences built into the product reviews, and more to the right, where it is about uh, social kind of getting into the ratings and say, reviews platforms. And these are the things we are actually able to bring in and may bring it all together and make a big impact for our consumers uh, in the process allowing them to make smart decisions making you know purchasing very very transparent and in the process significantly improving the revenue uptick for our um, retailers as well as brands mm -hmm. all right uh, i'm not going to spend a whole lot of time uh, this is a little bit about our competition um, so if you see the bar uh, the little chart bar chart it's actually a bar chart bazaar wise bar is very very big our biggest competitor is power reviews which is you know a little big you know, less than a centimeter. And then your part, which is primarily dealing with, um, you know, products is is almost a dot on this particular uh, chat. By the way, we are a leader, um, you know, not just because I'm telling you, we are leader on many, many dimensions, whether it is the total user generated content, the number of consumers who are on our platform, the amount of content that we are able to syndicate. We are probably the only, we are not probably, we are the only pr platform that can Put, make these ratings available globally in multiple sites, so on and so forth. So we are quite busy, uh, quite big, and a glimpse of some of the brands. And I'm not going to spend any time here. This is just a glimpse of the brands and retailers that are uh, that are current uh, customers, and um, you know they have been our customers for a long time. All right. Uh, another capability that we have very unique is syndication so you probably don't know this but this happens to you you may enter a rating or a review on one particular uh, internet retailer you buy something you pro provide your rating that rating can be made available for that particular product everywhere it is sold on any other retailer that is what we refer to as syndication which exponentially increases the reach of that particular feed uh, review and we have that capability. In fact, many of our uh, competitors like Power Reviews partners with us to take advantage of our um, syndication capability. Just uh, how you know the graph on the right kind of shows you native reviews versus the syndication power. It is exponential because it just can be replicated all over the place. These are many capabilities. I'm just kind of giving you a glimpse of the capabilities that we have. There are tons more, but I'm not going to spend time. Over the last year, just over the last year, we have done multiple acquisitions and have uh, significantly enhanced our capabilities. So we have a lot of um, you know, strengths that we build on. We have natural language processing. There is machine learning in some aspects. Um, in some ways, we have our own networks, which, are, which can test a new product, provide feedback, and that can be used back into uh, you know, powering more purchasing down the road and so, um, and so on. More recently, about three, four months ago, we acquired a company where uh, it is all about the visual user generated content integration with fa you know, Facebooks, the Instagrams and so on and so forth uh, and bringing all that content in. So um, again, this is an, uh, just a quick 30 seconds. The content is really the king here. We are able to generate tremendous amount of authentic content. We have mechanisms to manage that content then we have the capabilities to distribute the content to all the right customers and making that available to them. And on top of all of this, because of the vast network we have, we also have insights that allows the brands to learn how their product is doing. And if it's not doing well, we can actually give them those insights and they are able to make manufacturing decisions, maybe better PR. You know, if a, if a positive feedback comes in, 
we are able to influence their branding uh, the messaging that they can use to sell their product if it is a negative they go back to their drawing boards and fix it quickly so that before it becomes a mainstream product they are able to make all these tweaks so we in fact make the products better etc and in the process provides a lot of transparency to the consumers because they can trust the um, you know the reviews that are on these platforms and that allows them to kind of make really smart decisions and in the process um, you know overall um, you know, influence that whole network positively. All right. Uh, so with that uh, Bangalore story, quickly I'll switch over. Uh, the Bangalore Center um, was started in September of last year. We incorporated in August. I joined in September, so that's kind of the September start. I was employee one. Uh, fast forward to now, we are about sixty-five um, plus um, engineers. We are all. I mean, engineers meaning all in software development. We have some product owners, some engineering managers, scrum masters, along with the developers, SDETs, which are um, you know test engineers. They're not manual testers, as well as DevOps functionality. All of those together uh, is about 65 people. And we have a few uh, support functions, like uh, Kunal is a key member. And we have some contractors who are also engineers, by the way. So we are close to 80 already, uh, if not more than 80. And we will probably continue this growth slow and steady um, for the next few months. So we probably are one of those that um, even though our product engineering globally is about 250 plus out of the 950 I talked about, we'll probably be about 100 uh, to 150 over the next year or so. And that's where we will be. So we will be a small company. Uh, but with the umbrella of a mature organization supporting us. Uh, here, I want to also talk about the culture. It is um, one of the things that I have been building teams in India, um, you know, in Bangalore especially. Um, I have, a, I have a, enough of a brand. People know me in Bangalore area. Um, I take pride in building organizations where the engineers have a great time being part of the organization and in the process also build uh, impactful out for outcomes for the organization. So it's a balance between good, valuable contributions while having a great time doing it. We are not about uh, burning people down and uh, making them work around the clock. Absolutely not. We, uh, we pride in ensuring there is a balance uh, between work and life. So we want you to work hard, smart during your time at work, but then take the time to go do something else uh, with your personal time. By the way, we are not going to be a company that's going to sit and write. We are not that. We, we actually deliver impactful value, as I keep saying. So it's a balance between employee engagement and the value to the organization. Uh, transparent, people can say, ask whatever is on their mind. And that is a reflection of who I am and what I believe is the important thing. And that's what I bring to the table. And I do whatever I can to kind of make that a reality. It's a work in progress but we, we continue to get better. Um, you know, our engagement, latest engagement score was about 87. Anything about 80 is considered world-class. Um, we are 87 in India, and that's just a testament to what employees think um, the environment is in India. And we are not sitting on it. We are doing a lot of work to understand what else can we do to improve, and we are continuing to invest time in that as well. So, so uh, I'm gonna, uh, things I'm gonna, yes. Um, yeah. Sorry to uh, cut you. In fact, uh, you know, Guru told us about the uh, culture as well because that's what I was going to come at as well. One of the, uh, you know, as we move ahead with the questions as well. Now, at this point, I would just like to also, uh, you know, since we are talking about the culture, uh, you know, ask you and even Kunal can, uh, you know, uh, share his view. That what do you think, you know, uh, your current team would say that if they were to say two things that they like about the current setup, what would they be, you know, so that our candidates can also know what they are, you know, what is in store for them. Sure. A uh, very good question and good, um, you know, maybe segue into where I was going and I'll leave that up and I'll talk to you. Uh, see, the employees, when they come in, they want to uh, ensure they are continuing to learn. Uh, everybody comes to an organization because they want to continue to build their resume and skill sets. Hmm. Second thing, they want to be able to do it in an environment that is supportive. So not everybody who joins our organization is a go from day one. Some people are go in like two weeks. They're ready to go start delivering. Some people need a month, maybe even two months to basically come up to speed, internalize everything, understand it, it clicks in their mind, and then they start delivering. 
Um, and so we have to be, we have to have an environment where teams around them are supportive, take them through that journey, handhold them until they become ready to deliver. And when they are delivering, they want a fair balance between work where they want to contribute and showcase to everyone what they can do, but also be supportive when things are tight, like in this COVID situation. So I think that is what I mean by culture. And that's what I believe we bring to the table. The technology stack we interview people and um, they meet our bar, right? I mean, that is table stakes. Everybody who comes into finally, you know, shortlisted for a job are all smart, extremely good engineers. Uh, they work on cutting edge technologies. I have it up there. And, um, you know, there's the India tech. So it is pretty much decent cutting edge tech stack. I mean, uh, so they, they learn. Um, and they basically have an environment that will support them. And the scale, unprecedented scale I talked about, we're talking 20 to 30,000 API calls per second for anybody who's interested in we're anywhere between two to 6,000 emails in a single day, uh, about um, 500 to 600 million page views on a single day on a peak day, I'm talking about on a Black Friday last week. We're talking tremendous, I mean, everything we do is on AWS. So the learning, right the scale and the environment that allows them to kind of be themselves and continue hmm. to deliver. And that's what I think we try to offer. Right. So, and as an extension of that, since you mentioned a lot of stacks uh, that, you know, you guys work with, uh, even Kunal could, you know, uh, pitch in here is, uh, so at this point, I feel that it would, it would be a right time to give, uh, you know, our friends online a little bit more clarity into what your hiring process looks like typically, uh, what duration sort of it extends over, and any any specific cultural traits or attributes that you specifically look out for uh, throughout the process. Got it. Uh, so Kunal, do you want to uh, jump in and say something? I, I'm not sure if your connect is um, good. I'll give you just a sec. Okay, he's uh, he's struggling. His connection, I yeah, see. I yeah. uh, so, uh, see yeah, the. Hey, Kunal. So not sure if you heard the question. So do you want to just, um, you know, uh, did you catch the question, Kunal? No, I, I just logged out got automatically. Uh, sorry about that. I guess there seems to be some issue right now. So we just wanted to, you know, uh, tell our friends who are online right now about the hiring process at Bazaar Voice and, you know, what, uh, how, how long the process is and any, you know, kind of specific attributes or skill sets that you look out for. Yeah, sure. So I'll, I'll take that question. So it's basically the process starts off with a recruiter screen, which is done by me. And then post that, we share it with our hiring managers. Once it's good to go ahead, we immediately start scheduling their uh, technical rounds. So we only do two tech rounds. Uh, so let's say if it's a backend engineering position, so first uh, round is basically a uh, hardcore coding, the tech round. And then the tech two would be a hardcore designing round. So basically, the kind of questions, questions that we try to fo focus on these technical rounds are basically the we want to know how good that person is on coding so basically the doers mm -hmm. and the second round is basically how quickly the person can think about the problem solving techniques or how he can approach mm -hmm. to a solution which is known as the thinker so mm -hmm. these two things we always check in the candidate basically the th the doers and the thinkers once these sure. two are done if the person is really good we, we go ahead immediately for a hiring manager round mm -hmm. once that hiring manager is down and if all the uh, all the uh, feedbacks are good to go ahead then we immediately make them make them meet with Srini. Right. Okay. So that's the thing what, what we do. Mm -hmm. If in case, let's say in all the three rounds, the people are having different uh, scenario of the same candidate, then we catch up for a calibration. Mm -hmm. So basically we don't want to lose a candidate just because of someone, some panelist is saying, okay, it's mm -hmm. the rating is low. We mm -hmm. should reject them. We don't reject them mm -hmm. straight away. We first mm -hmm. have a good calibration round. We understand that. And then we take it ahead accordingly. Let's no, say fact, that's a very uh, that's a very good thing. In fact, lot very few companies actually, you know, uh, think of something like that. Otherwise, rejecting an application is very easy, right? Just to uh, hold on and take it through, and you know, give them an, an extra chance is always nice. Yeah, Kulang, you can continue. yeah, absolutely. And uh, just uh, uh, to add, the yeah. process will start and end in less than you know ten to twelve days. I mean, we go right. from the contact to a decision. In a, our goal is to do it in a week but we typically are able to do it in two weeks. So yeah. it'll be in and out. Uh, it's going to be very smooth. Uh, mm -hmm. We are still able to make smart decisions in spite of our process being pretty short and sweet, but I meet everyone because the cultural aspects are key. 
And that's where we get a chance. I get a chance to connect and make sure the person would be a fantastic addition to the uh, team we already have on the ground. So right. that is the intent there. Hopefully right. that um, you know kind of covers what you're looking for. Yes, yes. I think uh, now the you know people who have joined joined us online who are looking to apply at Bazaar Voice as well have much more clarity now as to you know what they can expect. Uh, now coming to uh, that, uh, you know, a lot of question, especially given the current situation, a lot of uh, uh, I get a lot of uh, you know job seekers must be having this question as to whether you know a Bazaar Voice is remote friendly. What is your take on uh, you know a remote work currently, or even otherwise once the situation subsides? Absolutely. I mean, remote uh, work is a mixed bag, uh, mixed bag current. Uh, yes. uh, you know, it's working great. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's fantastic from an organization perspective. People are at home. People are completely operating out of home. I've onboarded at least 30 plus people that I've not even met even once in person. We hired, we recruited, we interviewed, we did all our, you know, and then our made offers and they eventually came and joined us also, right? And they're working remotely, so I haven't even shook their head once, right? And it's working fantastic. Actually, the, the mixed bag is because people are probably working too much. Uh, that is the challenge uh, to all the people. Hey, you know, you need to take the break. You need to do more to make sure that you are, uh, you know, keeping it a healthy balance oh. between work and life. Uh, we oh. find that, um, you know, people don't have anything better to do. So they're just uh, opening their laptop up and they're working. Uh, oh. So that is the mixed bag. Uh, we don't have any challenges. Uh, we expect to work from home at least through the end of the year. And then we will continue to keep a look at how Bengaluru is, um, you know, getting better. And if Bangalore gets safe and sound, then we will have a plan to come back to work. But at this point, definitely until the end of uh, December, we announced in August itself, yeah. people are welcome to work from home uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, we doubled, um, you know, I doubled the ba uh, bandwidth, um, you know, basically the billing for, uh, we pay for broadband. So we doubled the um, uh, benefit and said, hey, get a second broadband connection just so that you have better connectivity. Uh, yeah. and stuff like that, uh, little things like that. We haven't done a whole lot, but we have done enough things that people feel pretty solid. Some are working from their native places all over India, and we are okay with that as well. In yeah. fact, we ship the, even new hires, we ship them laptops wherever they are. Sometimes it takes a few, couple of good days to get the laptop yeah. because they're in remote places sometimes. But yeah, yeah. overall, it's been fantastic. Wait, wait. Kunal, you'd like to add anything to that? Hello. Uh, so while I guess there's some uh, network issue there, so while Kunail is back, uh, Shrini, if you could just tell us one thing that you really like about you know uh, working at Bazaar Voice, uh, some things that uh, sort of you know a little. Uh, I know uh, here I wanted to go a little personal in the sense that you know where there is a more, uh, so we can you can connect more better with the candidates as well because you know these are a lot of questions. A lot of times these things are, uh, you know under the skin they are going on, which are not very visible uh, no, up front. Yeah, so I think, uh, look, um, you know, everybody wants to ask these questions, but nobody asks, right? Uh, one of the things is, hey, this is a tough uh, time of the year. Many companies are struggling. How is Bazaar Wise doing? Uh, that's a question. Uh, we are lucky to be in an environment where everything is moving online. And we are primarily positioned to actually help companies that are moving online. So we are a demand for bazaar wise network and platform is unprecedented right now so we are very fortunate i mean we don't call ourselves uh, like we have a good product good platform but we are fortunate that's one part i want to make sure i leave it out there for anybody worried about stability and those kind of things uh, the thing that i like is we are a small company with the the thought process of a big company so many big companies are very employee uh, friendly they have the right employee culture etc but smaller companies very small companies want to do it but can't afford to do it i think we have all the uh, makings of the big company where we actually do the right thing for the employees we we are supportive uh, another example right uh, paternity leave for us is like four weeks i mean just so that you know almost nobody has the something like that in india uh, it's a common uh, outside of india but we give four weeks for even uh, you know fathers who have ch children right uh, we have a new baby so we are like we do the we try to be uh, do the right thing uh, from a people uh, culture perspective 
while giving you that feel of a smaller company where the decisions are made faster you don't want to sit and wait for a long time so it's that nice balance i'm loving it i work for very large companies i mean my profile is online and very small companies this is a beautiful balance and i'm not saying it just because um one of the one of my negatives is i can't mislead somebody into right. into thinking in a way uh, so right. this for me has been a very nice balance and i think that uh, most people who are who are here to learn want to do something um, you know some uh, add some value but continue to work and improve their resume this should be a good place because they'll get the support they need so while uh, thanks for sharing that i guess a lot of people uh, had these questions and a lot of questions in their minds would have gotten uh, answered by you know uh, what you said uh, so i'll just quickly uh, you know ask uh, kunal to uh, sort of share his views and then we'll move to the q and a section there are a lot of questions coming in uh, so we'll try to address a couple from there as well and then we can take it all, you know offline to the lounge section where we can interact with them i think kunal is having trouble with the session i think you can take q and a if he gets chance maybe he can take some sure sure i think one question by the way shrini great great presentation great information i think this was by far the most informative uh, and interesting session for me personally yes uh, some of the answers that you gave uh, were actually very counter intuitive on a lot of counts for example you said that remote is actually great for company but you are thinking you're not so sure about it from a long term perspective because of your concern of employees well uh, welfare and you know, their well, well being that was mm -hmm. a very interesting answer and i think more nuggets like that i actually did some polls uh, about how people how many people want to work at bazaar voice and there was like 95% 100% votes coming in your favor so i think people really are uh, pretty much uh, you know uh, curious and they, they got a lot of insights so questions i think uh, Uh, there are uh, there are questions around uh, what kind of roles you have open uh, people are asking about uh, language and frameworks and stacks and they are also asking about uh, product roles do you have junior or senior level product roles apart from whatever now has put out there on cutshot what else jobs are there and uh, uh, what is your ramp up plan for on on you know on, on getting all these people on board got it so uh, we are looking for product roles which are in the mid uh, junior to mid size so uh, somewhere around um, you know maybe I'll, i'll put it i'm a tenure is a very bad way to qualify but i don't know how else to do it it is going to be around senior product owner type of a role now uh, that's what we have and we are a little flexible right person we can go up or down depending on we have we can hire a junior person he's like has a lot of upside or a senior person if he is really really great and brings a lot of value to us uh, so we are flexible to some extent that way um on the product side uh, now talking about you we are also looking for a user experience designer um more on the you know a junior side maybe on the senior ux designer type of a role those are the two product roles that we are looking for uh, from an engineer side we have a range we are looking for people with 3 4 years experience all the way to 10 12 i'm even looking for a principal engineer can even come with 15 20 years of experience tech stack uh, and the cloud um, you know capabilities are important as as you go more senior they become more required for me but junior p junior uh, you know early tenured employees we will be much more flexible if they have the right skill set right mindset we are willing to give them the time to come up to speed and um, be part of the journey so the technology stack is uh, on the slide hopefully they can still see my slide if so it is there um you know talking from java there uh, on the ui side it is react um you know red hat and some back end node node um and as well as scala we're one of the new new teams we are actually going to do some scala work uh, we haven't done it yet uh typically it's a java shop um we have tons and tons of microservices and apis at our scale that's the only way you can have it all everything gets done on um aws um no exceptions uh a platform primarily uh, cassandra kafka for a lot of data um, you know and so on so and we are now uh, bits and pieces we are adapting kubernetes for a lot of the ci cd uh, discipline is very very solid in ours and we have uh, mostly automated everything and now we are actually incorporating kubernetes more and more so it will even become a lot more easier for us to manage our infra so that's uh, very simply put uh, the technology stack but the engineer wise we are willing to work with you anybody from a 
what we call a, a C2 person, software engineer two, all the way to a principal. So we're talking about software engineer, you know, senior software, then staff, senior staff, principal. I mean, I'm, I'm that open. For the right person, we are going to open the right role. Hopefully that answered um, the question yeah. you're looking for. Is there any anything else I missed there? I think the next question uh, would be that how do you how do people who don't see a fitting job as of now on cut short uh, that Kunal, Kunal has already shared how do they apply because you seem to be very flexible so Kunal if you can uh, create a job uh, which as uh, like where people can apply outside of even a job match uh, and uh, depending on you know their interest and their capabilities you can perhaps uh, you know shortlist them if you can do that then we can notify them after the event after the sure. session so they can freely apply otherwise that right now they are kind of very bounded by the entire job description sort of a thing okay uh, we i can work with kunal to see if there is any such flexibility we can create maybe you may have to help kunal a little bit but yep. we can definitely yep. do something like that yep Okay, so uh, anybody who wants to apply for Bazaar Boys not seeing jobs, please follow the company uh, on the job mm -hmm. page. They will see their uh, other jobs. You can follow that company, and whoever uh, is following, we will notify them about this. Uh, you know, next step if we are going to create one more job, which will be more general, or you know, where, where you can apply outside of the jobs that have been shared. So we yeah, have thanks, Srini, for that. Sure, uh, thank you. Any more questions, uh, Konal? You have already. I think we covered a lot of them, right? Yeah, mostly the questions around the, the job openings only, which uh, yeah. they can see in the. Okay. Understandable. I'm reading very quickly. Four, six yeah. years product management. I think those fit into our sweet spot actually, uh, mm -hmm. as long as there is enough of a match. Um, and we, look, we it is important the communications. Those are softer skills also come into play, as you know. So as all of those match, yeah, absolutely, that is a sweet spot for us. Anybody with four years plus, uh, as high as eight, nine years, should be able to apply, even if you're not a perfect match. Take the lower role, get through the pipe, uh, and we will we will not just uh, pigeonhole you into that, right? I mean, we yeah. will, based on how you do it, interview-wise, we will again place you at the appropriate level. That's why we kind of have only a certain number of roles, but we hire a role up or roll down routinely. Uh, because the right person comes okay. by uh, and is better than what he applied, we are not going to give him the same role, right? I mean, it, right. Uh, we have to put him in at the next level. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you for the time. I am sure somebody else is waiting, um, so I appreciate the time. Uh, do you guys, if you any questions, I'll take them. If not, uh, let me know when I'm excused and I will give the time back to you folks. Sure. So we might have some time uh, to join the tables after we go move backstage to the lounge section. So where okay. we have, um, you know, assigned a couple of tables to Bazaar Voice. So their okay. candidates will leave a space for you. you. can just shuffle among those tables and take some questions and you might get a chance to interact with uh, the candidates as well. So we might have some time. So just uh, check it oh. out. So what we can do, Karan, in that case mm -hmm. is 2.37 right now. Yes. Uh, since there are a lot of questions and Srini is super helpful, yeah. super, uh, you know, uh, flexible on things, I think it would be great if we give him more time to interact. Mm -hmm. uh, so why don't we, uh, like, start the next session, which was supposed to start at 2.45, at around 2.55 or 3 p.m. And that gives them 20 minutes of table time. So yes. uh, we can end the session. Srini and Kunal can perhaps grab the tables uh, which are marked as bazaar voice tables where people are waiting and see if you can you know or talk i think we also need a bit of break for to us to organize before we go to the next session so i think it might be a 20 minute good break before we start the next session sounds good yeah <laughs> absolutely thank you once again thanks, thanks kunal <laughs> thanks Shini. kunal thanks. i'm sorry you faced so many problems today yeah kunal is struggling there uh, not sure what's going on must be uh, yeah no worries i'm here i'm glad mine worked uh, so I have to. I'll figure out a way to leave this. This is, in, by the way, I love the uh, love this particular interface, but it is a little tricky to find the right buttons. I mean, maybe feedback to the product team. So, but I will. I will find my way to the uh, to the. No, I, we will. We will end the session. So you. Oh, okay. Ready. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Karan. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thanks, Karan. Thanks. Pleasure interacting with.